If you're looking to get more iron, calcium, and magnesium into your diet, take a look at this plant. This is what you need. Now, before you get too excited, this is not hemp, and it certainly is not cannabis either. This, I'll lay that there. This is Potentilla recta, which is also an more commonly referred to as this sulfur sank foil. And some people call it the rough fruited sank foil. Now take a look at these flowers. Beautiful yellow flowers. And it looks like each petal is a heart shape. But make no mistake, farmers certainly aren't in love with this plant, nor are conservationists. This can be invasive, depending on what your definition of invasive is. And it grows in so many different areas. Sankfoil is actually in a genus of Potentilla that has more than 300 species of flowering plants. And they all belong to the rose family. I'm going to take a walk down here because there's lots more. And I apologize for way down there, there's some traffic, but it also is kind of important to show you that not always when we forage are we in areas where we're listening to the birds and the silence or, or the you know wind in the trees. It's not always like that for a lot of people. For a lot of people, this is reality. But anyways, the common name which means five leaved, and I showed you that. It refers to the number of leaflets in the compound leaf, although some have three or seven or more leaflets. I haven't spotted any in this area. Now this was first introduced to North America from Europe, and it was suspected to be in the mid to late 1800s. However, there's so many different species of this, and they're mostly native to the north temperate zones of the planet, as well as there are some species in the Arctic. Potentilla is Latin, which means powerful, and that refers to the medicinal qualities of this plant, which I'll get to. Recta means erect which describes how this plant stands. It's very tall. It can get to two feet or three feet tall, depending on the environment. It's kind of hard to get one all by itself in here because it's growing in with goldenrod, Queen Anne's lace is coming up. So it's really, well, here's one that's sort of standing tall by itself here with a yarrow right beside it. There we go. This is, let's see if I can, we have a bit of wind today, which I'm very grateful for. It's very humid. You can see it's hairy. And which by the way, for those of you who may be newbies at this and actually think that this possibly could be hemp. I've had quite a few people question that. And hemp definitely is smooth. It is not hairy. And of course, hemp certainly does not flower like that. I gotta get back here in the shade as the heat is quite impressive today. So you'll find that the leaves along the lower part of the stem down here are much larger than the ones that you find up here at the upper parts. I'm hoping that this is focusing in well between a bit of a breeze and some sweat falling from my eyebrows into my eyes, but that's okay. Heat is always a good thing. So the flower, each flower has, as you can see, 
Let's see if I can get this focused. Come on. Five petals. And, okay, please don't get windy on me. And if you can zoom in here, if I can, I'm trying, I'm trying. The stamens, there are 10 to 30 of them. Although that might be very difficult to see in this video, so you'll have to click on the link below for more detailed pictures. For the Yule Gibbons fans, the young shoots and leaves are what contains all the nutrients of this plant. They are edible. You can toss them into salads. You can cook them in with a casserole or anything else. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any more up there. There really is no distinct taste in regards to the leaves of the St. Foil flower. There we go. I think I'm getting the uh, stamens there. And it's certainly, it's certainly not one of those go-to plants that you want to forage for, but if you find it, definitely take some of the leaves and add them into your diet to get the nutrients, which is always a good thing. Now let's talk about the medicinal qualities. Come on, focus, there we go. This is an astringent. However, this plant has been studied extensively in Turkey. And traditionally in Turkey, it's been used for its antibacterial, anti-inflammatory effects, and as a tonic. Uh, I think I'm gonna stay here in the shade. The leaves contain quercetin, camphorol, and caffeic acid. And by the way, caffeic acid, let me just focus in again, caffeic acid is highly beneficial for us. And you'll find lots of it in these leaves. And according to a website called Frontiers in Oncology, caffeic acid is a phenolic compound. And apparently it's in just about every plant and especially coffee, coffee beans, it's in tea. And it's an antioxidant, it's an anti-inflammatory. And apparently, according to this study in 2018, or it was released in 2018 anyway, uh, it has anti-cancer effects or anti-cancer activities, which is very exciting. If you were to gather the root, you could use that as a styptic, but you'd want to clean it first. I wouldn't be using dirty roots as a styptic, which means it'll stop bleeding to superficial cuts. The leaves can be detoxifying and apparently a lot of people claim, and I've, I don't have any studies to back this one up, but maybe it is possible that what is in those leaves help in reducing withdrawals from addictive alkaloids such as nicotine and cocaine. If there's anybody who has any research on that, I'd love to hear from you. And of course, I think I mentioned it has antiseptic properties, which it can be used as a mouthwash. So it's not just another weed. It's not just a noxious weed. It's highly beneficial, depending on what your perspective is. Potentilla recta. Add this to your daily diet. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I truly, truly, truly appreciate your support. If you're a subscriber, you know I am so incredibly grateful for all your support. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.